Good morning, Andrew Swift. It's great to have you with us. Good morning. It's great to be here. Thank you. Absolute pleasure, mate. First of all, we need to congratulate you on the release of your new single, All These Parts. Wow, what a great song. Another beauty from Andrew Swift. (laughs) Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm stoked uh, this one got the call up as a single. So, yeah, glad it's out in the world. Now, All These Parts was written by that wonderful songwriter Amber Ray Slade, and it's a fifth single from your brilliant album from earlier this year, Lightning Strikes and Neon Nights. Can you tell us a little bit about the song? Yeah, so, I mean, I've been a fan of Amber, Amber's for quite a while, and uh, when I was looking at songs for the album and, and, you know, sending my songs through to my producer, Matt Fell, he actually pitched one of Amber's songs to me, all these parts. And uh, so I said, look, as long as I've got Amber's blessing, I'd love to do it, I love her stuff. And uh, I, I clearly got her blessing. She sings some backing vocals on the track, and she's absolutely stoked it's been uh, released as a single. And But the song is all about... And, and what it's all about is why I, I connected with it as well, because I've been there. Uh, you know, a lot of us have been in a relationship where you know it's not working. Every part of you is letting you know that it's not working, but your heart's a bit too stubborn and it's holding on to the thought of something that could be. And uh, that's basically what the song is about. All these parts refer to all your body parts that are letting you know that it's not right. Right, fantastic. Look, you sing and play guitar on the song, of course. And you also yeah. mentioned Amber does uh, vocals on it. What about uh, some of the other people who contribute to the song? Can you tell us a little bit about them? Yeah, so uh, Matt Fell, who produced it, he, he plays a lot of instruments on the track. Right. Uh, uh, the, the majority of them, I, I dare say. He's a very talented man, but he did bass, extra guitars. Um, there's some keys in there, all the percussion, that's all Matt. And then the drummer was a, a drummer, I believe he's out of Sydney, Miles Thomas. Right. So. Uh, he played on half a dozen of the tracks on the album, and uh, this was one of them. Uh, but then, you know, there's people, Matt, myself, uh, Amber, and my girlfriend are all doing backing vocals on this track. So there's there's a ton of vocals uh, in the background happening uh, during the song. Now, we mentioned all of these parts as the fifth single from your fourth album, Lightning Strikes and Neon Nights, which was released early this year. The album has been hugely successful, of course, number one on the Aria Country album chart. It actually debuted at number one. You must be pretty happy with how successful the album has been. Absolutely. I, I feel like I put pressure on myself now, now these days, though. You know, the first first album came out and it went number one on the Aria Oz Country chart. And, uh, you know, it's I feel like I put pressure on myself to get the the, pre, the next for the following ones there as well. So, but this one, you know, had some other highlights as well. You know, for me, it was a number two Australian all genres album so I was pretty stoked on Fantastic, that. Fantastic yeah. Yeah absolutely stoked with how it's been received. It's always nerve-wracking releasing a new album you know you've got new songs where you're being vulnerable and you hope that people will listen to it and enjoy it so it's always nerve-wracking and always a relief when people like it. Oh, that's fantastic mate. Now I've got to tell you this I love the whole album but uh, the wonderful Cheap Liquor has got to be one of my absolute favourites. That chorus. <laughs> Cheap liquor, absolutely anthemic, mate. Can you tell us a little about Cheap Liquor too? Yeah, sure. So I wrote that with my good friend Greta Zilla. We, uh, we've done a whole heap of touring together over the years and we've written a few songs together and we were sitting down and I said, look, you know, we want to write a song for this album. Uh, and she, she, she goes, look, I've got this idea and she pitched it and we, we sat down and worked on it together and it was great because Greta and I, because we've sung together so often, we were immediately doing... The, the layers of vocals at the end of the song right. uh, that you might hear where it's, you know, it's, I'm singing cheap liquor and then there's the it don't cost much uh, but it get the job done part. So we were, <laughs> you know, immediately immediately able to layer that as we were writing the song. So, uh, but yeah, we're just a, it's a fun, it's almost a bit more of a swampy feel, that song. Yeah. You know, a bit of a dirtier feel and but about how you don't need the top shelf stuff to get the job done and that's not just with alcohol, it's, it's weird. Anything in life, really. You don't always need the best of the best. Fantastic, mate. And I, I just imagine playing it live where you've got the crowd just coming out with cheap liquor. It'd be absolutely sensational. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a fun one to sing along with. I bet, I bet it sure. is. Fantastic, mate. Look, 2023 uh, has been a very big year for you, of course. In addition to the success of the album, there's also the small matter of winning the Golden Guitar for Male Artist of the Year. Must have, <laughs> yeah, it must have been an incredible thrill and honour to take out this year's Golden Guitar for Male Artist of the Year. Oh, mate, it was incredible, it was absolutely incredible, and a, and a total surprise. I only had the one nomination for the night, and uh, I, I probably got a little too comfortable thinking that I wasn't going to win it. Uh, right. I, was, I was sitting there, my vest was unbuttoned, and my shirt was untucked, and when they read my name out, 
first of all, the wind came out of me. I couldn't believe it. And the first thing I said to my, my girlfriend was, uh, I need to get dressed. Yeah, and, right. I was, and I was trying to button up my thing and tuck in my shirt and, uh, while I'm trying to hug my dad and my, my girlfriend and everyone around me. And so it was definitely a surprise. And, and I still pinch myself, really. And just to... I have days where I think about what it actually means to have taken that one home. And, and it just, uh, it, you know, it, it makes me feel very proud and a little emotional. Oh, that's fantastic, mate. Look, it was third time lucky for you, of course, um, for Male Artist of the Year Gong. You also yeah. nominated in 2019, 2022. So, yeah, quite, yeah. So you finally got there. Yeah, that's it. It's just, uh, you know, third time's a charm. Yeah, I well, could, that's... I, I, could, I couldn't even be disappointed in 2022 because that was, uh, that was the, the award that, tipped Troy Casadaly over the, the record amount of golden guitars right. that I won. So I was just, I was very happy for him, so I couldn't even be disappointed. Ah, uh, fantastic, mate. Look, you recently came, commenced a tour of nine dates taking in Victoria, New South Wales and South Australia. you played a couple of gigs so far. How's the tune gone, tour gone so far? Yeah, good, and we're constantly adding to it too. So there's right. still, uh, I think there's another one being at, uh, announced, uh, another couple this week. So, yeah, uh, but the, the next six weeks or so are pretty flat out. The show, current shows have been great, um, and a lot of fun ones coming up. So uh, you've got a, a run to South Australia and Tassie, and, and out to Horsham. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, fantastic. So uh, I guess uh, jump on all the websites and have a look, and for all, all the extra dates as they come on board. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you go to andrewswift.com.au, all the information will be. There. Fantastic, mate. And what about the set list for the tour? I'm guessing it includes all the big hits and maybe a few newies as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm trying to mix it up a little. I feel like uh, it's it's getting harder to pick songs. I got to right. say, you know, you, especially when we do festivals, we might have a forty five minute or an hour spot. And I go, oh, it, it hurts dropping some of the songs. You know, we <laughs> but when I, when I'm doing my own show, I get to you know it's a bit of a longer set. Uh, but you know, try and trying to keep it a little bit fresh as well. So I'm putting slipping in some of the older deep cut songs on the next run of shows. Right. And, just trying to mix things up a little bit. Oh, that's fantastic, mate. Looking after the tour, I guess uh, the tour sort of uh, leads into Tamworth, does it, a little bit um, in January? Yeah, pretty much. So uh, This year I'm touring up until I have to get my wisdom teeth out, <laughs> and that'll knock me out for the rest of the year. Oh, and okay. To Tamworth, yeah. Right, so. yeah. It's always a great event. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. Uh, but, yeah, the, the Tamworth is. Tamworth's a great event. I'm looking forward to that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, so. fantastic, mate. With an, yeah. and You never know, there may be another golden guitar or two with Andrew Swift's name on them. Again, oh, by the mate, look, I, 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 it'd be amazing. I'd, I'd be happy with a nomination this year. It's a massive year of releases for music, and, and uh, I, I'm a big fan of a lot of the music that's coming out. So, uh, yeah, but fingers are crossed. Fantastic, always. mate. Look, if we can go back to the really early days of Andrew Swift's music career for a moment, way back to yeah. when you first started out in music, what are your memories of the really early days? It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was, I mean, I started with a, a gig in a little pizza shop sitting in the corner playing for whatever tips I could get in a free pizza. Right. Uh, uh, but then, you know, crept my way up doing doing all the covers in the local pubs and the stuff and uh, then uh, I joined a band with some guys from school. Well, basically they told me that I was in the band because I played guitar and I had a shed that we could rehearse in <laughs> so uh, and, but I loved it those, those were so much fun those days we, we toured the country and I, I learned a lot about the music industry I learned a, a lot of what not to do a lot of what to do and then I was able to carry all those experiences and that knowledge over into uh, when I went solo and, and found my, made my way into the country music scene oh, that's fantastic man and you, and you mentioned the pizza shop so was, that was going to be my next question what, do you remember your very first gig Sounds like it was in yeah. the pizza shop. Yeah, it was Valentine's Day, two thousand and one. Right, you and, remember uh, the day, oh, yeah. And but I remember, I remember tuning up and for the, my for, to start the gig, and I snapped the string, and I wasn't, <laughs> okay. I wasn't knowledgeable enough to bring extra strings. So I played my whole first gig with five strings. Oh, no. Like a nightmare, mate. But I'm sure you did a good job. Well, Absolutely. Well, you, well, the, well, look where you've ended up. So fantastic. The, yeah, the learning curve started quick yeah. and steep, that's for sure. <laughs> Great stuff. Look, and what about um, some of the artists who have inspired you in the very early days? I know this sort of often puts artists on the spot because there's so many. I mean, often they say, oh, gee, I can't sort of think of someone straight away. But are there any artists in particular that you sort of can think yeah. of? Yeah, yeah. I, like, I was a huge, early on, I was a huge, still am a huge Van Morrison fan. Right. Uh, Crowded House as well. Uh, but then, you know, like I was, I was right into the band live in my teens, and uh, you know, so uh, not a lot of country artists were around during that, um, you know, during those early influences. But yeah. you, with artists like Van Morrison, 
you know, he he does dabble in some country sounding stuff and, right. and, and Americana stuff. So he, he's quite a diverse artist, uh, as we all know. But yeah, I mean, these days my influences, you know, I, I listen to a, a lot of American country. I love, you know, Chris Stapleton, Miranda Lambert, uh, Jason Isbell, uh, Hayley Witters, uh, Lainey Wilson. I could keep going. There's so many <laughs> artists that, yeah. that, you know, and, and it's constantly. I'm constantly being influenced with, with music that I listen to. Oh, that's fantastic, mate. Um, yeah, and you can hear it come through in your music, actually. I mean, it's obviously country music, but um, a lot of your stuff sounds uh, quite different. You know what I mean? You can't sort of say yeah. straight out country. It's sort of uh, got a different sort of feel to it, you know? Yeah, and, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Uh, yeah, you know, it's great. I, I, think, I think, you know, genres are blending more and more these yeah, days. And, yeah. you know, I grew, up, I grew up with my mum, you know, listening to pop music in the car, like your Jenny Morris and Kate Sobrano right. and, and whatever was on and the cause and whatever was on the radio. And then, you know, I played in a pop punk band for years. So right. there's so yeah. there's all sorts of these influences that probably come through in, in what I'm doing. Yeah, it's fantastic. And it's amazing uh, how many country artists I, I interview, they, they actually gravitate to country after starting out in that yeah. sort of rock pop sort of genre. It's it's amazing yep. really. Yeah, yep. It, it's it's a you know, I feel like it's it's just like taste buds, you know. Yep. As a kid, I didn't like avocado. <laughs> Love it now. You know, you you you're constantly growing yeah. and maturing. What what a fantastic yeah. analogy. Brilliant, mate. Look, before we let you go, <laughs> uh, I need to ask you about your ambassadorial role for the iconic dog in the tucker box at Gunner Guy. Can you tell us yeah. a little bit about that? Yeah, so I once made a post on social media saying I'm pretty sure it's illegal to not stop and get a photo of the dog on the tucker box okay. if you're going past. Probably, yeah, you're right. <laughs> right, and then and then after that, every time I was going past, I stopped to do the photo and posted it. Right. But, but I was going past so often that it became a thing and people would tag me in photos, people would send me photos, uh, people still send me memorabilia uh, of the dog on the tucker box occasionally. Uh, but the council took note and they uh, ended up making me the ambassador. So, you know, there's one year, the one year I stopped 20 times at the dog on the tuck box. So. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I, we, yeah. We, we just went past there a couple of weeks ago. I must admit, we didn't actually take a photo this time, mate. So no, oh, next time... Please. You'll be getting a fine in the mail. Oh, I'll be getting mate. a fine and I'll get the ambassador right right onto me. So uh, I better be careful. Absolutely, yeah. mate. <laughs> Thanks so much, Andrew, for joining us today. It's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for the support. Oh, that's not a problem, mate. And good luck with the new single and the tour, of course. Thanks, mate. Yes, yeah, looking forward to getting back out on the road. That's great, mate. And we uh, fingers crossed for another gold guitar or two, mate, in, in January. Yeah. I reckon you're a big oh, chance. Then. Oh, thank you, mate. Appreciate it. Our pleasure, mate. Thanks so much. We'll have to take tap again soon. Sounds like a plan. Thank okay, you. Okay, mate. Thanks a lot. Bye. See, See you, Andrew. Bye. bye.